Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of The Smoking Room. This time we're gonna have Kikoni spoilers because we're gonna do uh, another drip episode. This is this time instead of being about the Mineko characters, it's gonna be about Kikoni characters. I'm Des and I'm here with Kyoda, I'm Horse Fry. Hey, I'm Kyle. Hi, I'm Pokey. I, I have a very important question to ask all of you. What do you think of like military casual style? Because <laughs> that's gonna affect a lot of um, <laughs> how you see the rest of the what, characters. What does that entail? What is a military casual outfit? I mean, back when I was a lad, like, um, it was, like, slightly popular to have those straps on the shoulders. Oh. Like, oh, okay. Ages ago, when I was, like, really young. Like, I don't know, like, that, that kind of thing just kind of bleeds through into, like, like I guess civilian fashion. I, I hated those straps in particular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I do have a jacket that has those things. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a thing you usually see on jackets and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. I think it looks cool i think it's nice i i like it when the girls have those things it's it's very snappy right like the the, the whole style and, and it like that's like if if, if umineko was like lolita this is like i think military casual so so what was your what where did you want to get with the question horse fry do you think that will affect our judgment of kikonia fashion i just think like if you if you don't like that style you're not gonna like like a lot of actually i'm looking at the sprites and there is a lot of variety so there is maybe that's not quite correct but definitely the aou i think they've got that style that's like Mm. not not quite military because you've got like you've got people in like short skirts which is not like anything even close to military but it's got like the the uniform-esque style yeah it has like uniform characteristics but in general it's just a very out there design for what you could mm. call a military outfit. It's like everyone in Kikonia was dressed to impress. Yeah. And I like that. Mm. I like the the style of the new designs. I will say part of what makes it have that uniform feel, if I pull out my inner linguist, I will say that there are uniforms because there's something that connects <laughs> most of the squads. For instance, the the blue mm. belt around the arm oh. of the um uh, war cat members. I have a question. Are we judging them, like, one on their outfit and two on their gauntlets, if they have them? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the gauntlet tier that's, right. that's an amazing idea. Let's do two tier lists. Alternatively, this is the tier list gauntlet. <laughs> oh my fucking god. <laughs> so, which, so which do you want to do first, outfits or gauntlets? Yeah, I think yeah, we outfits do outfits first, first right? Okay. Alright, so, so here we have Meow. Now let's look at Gunhild. Oh, the thing on her neck! Oh, yeah, yeah. It's also around her arm and her. Oh wait, uh, I think down there there's also yeah, it's on Jaden's too. Yeah. Oh damn. Mm. Neither did I. I never noticed that. Each squad has a color that like unifies them on, and it's <laughs> displayed in the character bios. But for Warcat, it's blue. Okay, we'll see that as we go. Let's start with Meow. I personally think. There's too much going on on top and too little going down on the bottom. Yeah, very yeah. little going on down the bottom. True. He's got little puffy uh, pants, little puffy shorts going on underneath. Maybe if he, if Meow had something similar to Dwanar on the legs, or maybe some mm. leg warmers, it would give some more weight to the bottom portion of the design, but it just feels like there's something missing on Meow's legs. Maybe it's because you like literally never see... like below like any part you only see the top half of the sprite in the game so mm. that's true because like uh you can see also on the screen like the sprite looks like it doesn't have a lot of negative space but the full body of it's just like oh <laughs> mm. yeah good point i don't know what it's called i like the um is it called like a rough like the beginning of an apron like the red thing what's that called yeah i like that I like that. Oh, the right thing. I, I think I, in my mind that's a cravat. Wait, can, can you spell what you just said? Uh, yeah. C R A V A T, I think. I guess. Mm. It's it's whatever Rosa also mm. uses. It's the thing. It's the thing. The outfit is. It seems very serious for a character who takes yeah. himself very seriously. I was gonna say it looks like like top half looks like a lot more like a dress uniform, but like for a parade or a, or a, like a official ceremony 
Yeah. But it also looks like the kind of thing you'd put a pair of pants on for. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Then what about the, the hairstyle? Do you like the, the, the anime little side bank things he has going on? Yeah, I, I, I like it. I think it's pretty good. Really? I think it gives it a nice, interesting shape. But it's kind of funny, like, it's obviously, like, nothing even close to what an actual military would let you wear. Like, I think anime-style things that are in the military kind of just... What's the trope called? Um, like, military casual? I don't know. Where, where, they, where they, like, they barely even try, like, but, <laughs> um, but like, like, this one looks like, you know, Meow actually had some thoughts about, maybe I shouldn't have long hair because it'll cause some practical issues. I don't know. That's that's the that's the vibe I kind of get from that hairstyle. Ah. But it's also like, you know, it's not the buzz cut you'd probably actually get. Yeah. It also might strike a nice balance. We're not on uh, she, her, meow yet, but like keeping in mind that two people in one body, they have to make uh, compromises mm. with how androgynous their hairstyle is. That's true. Mm-hmm. I'm looking at his outfit and I'm kind of struggling to understand what the belts are doing. Yes. I, I I think belts can look good, like if 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 they're like on overalls or something. But when they're there just to be there, is it like supposed to like hold something? Like, is it supposed to be like a utility belt that you can like reach into and just pull out a grenade? Despite <laughs> the fact that he has a four dimensional uh, container, it keeps meow meow rings in there just in case. <laughs> I know I know we're not talking about gauntlets yet, but like it does actually look. I think it looks it goes well with the look of his gauntlet because it's got that I think it's got like a steampunk kind of style to it. It does. And if you took away the belts, I feel like it would be it would actually just be a dr- like a dress uniform with no pants. Still, they could you know, cause you could have given like a bag attached to the belt or something. Cuz this way it just gives off fucking <laughs> a, 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 a be- j- trousers belts again. Maybe they have a really small backpack. Uh, on <laughs> that we just can't see. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's funny because I was last night I, in preparation for this. I went with I went into a voice call with a bunch of friends who'd never played When They Cry, and I just showed them and asked them for their impressions. And that's exactly <laughs> to the point where we got to. There, there should be a backpack there hidden behind almost every character. The backpack is to be <laughs> revealed in Phase Three. <laughs> it's one of the answers. What's right, Meow? Where where do you want to put him? I think Meow is a very solid B. B, yeah. I would say it's a, it's yeah. I say B. It's solid. I was gonna say B or A. It's a good design to base our opinions on other designs off of. Yeah. Also, I heard someone say Meao once, and I'm like, <laughs> now my mind is filled with doubt. Because <laughs> like, my brain is like, okay, so it's Meow and Meow, but then I'm just like, oh, but Meao and Meow also makes sense. Like, it makes more phonetic sense. I I I still. I, when I say like he meow, I try to give it a, a bit of that Japanese pronunciation where they really open their mouths to say the vowels. I try to say like meow, and then when it's she her meow, I try to say it like the cat onomatopoeia, like meow. Mm. But it always ends up sounding kind of the same. So it's kind of futile. It mm. is the same word. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, let's do the gauntlet now. It, it really embodies the gauntlet knight aspect because yeah. it mm-hmm. looks like a visored helmet for a knight. It has a really cool steampunk aesthetic with like what looks like a dial yeah. at the bottom. Like I don't know if I'm biased because this was the first gauntlet I saw, but th- this gauntlet encapsules like pure gauntlet knight gauntlet yeah. design, which is just a general amalgamation of different concepts from whatever specific theme the squad is about. And it's just these different concepts integrated in not necessarily a way that makes sense but just a way that they're there somehow there's a gun there and a helmet the helmet looking thing is not working as a helmet and the gun looking thing is not working as a gun but i mean the concept is there i like how huge it is because it's obvious that meow is is it's very self-conscious about being small <laughs> yes <laughs> what's the phrase is uh Short kings, uh, my <laughs> Short kings, that works. I I really like when when they give characters big fucking arm attachments. It just looks it it, it never fails to look good. So I'm glad our MC for this story has one. Yeah, it looks very like a gauntlet core, like <laughs> <laughs> what? Which feels like a stupid thing to say about the first example of a gauntlet. I think this should go. 
either to A or S. I think, I think we can put it in S. I was going to say we're going to struggle <laughs> with this one because it's like one of my favorite gauntlets too. I'd be happy putting it in S, but we could put it in A and then give it space. I think it's a good S, and if we change our minds, like, down, yeah. more gauntlets in the future, we could move it down, but I think it's Yeah, I'm S. fine with putting it in S. Okay. Congratulations, Meow. You got the, the most regular score for your outfit and the best score for your gauntlet. Uh, do the characters have any say in what their gauntlet looks like, or is it just made by the military? Because mm-hmm. they have different gauntlets, even yeah, in the same squad, I think right? so. Let's check that. Well, some of them have different. I mean, some of them have the same, but yeah. most of them have different. I imagine it's probably like, um, probably probably like um, Warcat all have the same manufacturer. <gasps> Yo, look, our thumbnail! <laughs> holy shit! Hey, uh, <laughs> this looks like it's similar to Meow mm. Scotland, but it's like better fitting Jaden's build. Mm. So I don't know how like off the top of my head how like uh, Grave Mole's gauntlets look like, but maybe each squad has a similar aesthetic. Actually, I'm looking at them right now. They actually have a similar aesthetic to the rest of the AOU. They all have that thing on top. Okay, so maybe it's just each country has their own manufacturer and they all have mm-hmm. similar mm-hmm. motifs across them. Which is interesting because ABN is the one that encompasses the European countries, or a lot of European countries, but then the AOU is the one with medieval armor looking at gauntlets. What, what all's in the AOU? It's, it's Japan, America, uh, Finland, think, Russia, Canada, Finland, Russia, oh yeah. All places where knights were prominent. <laughs> <laughs> it was only day half the time. <laughs> He's wearing pants, which is an improvement. <laughs> True. Immediate plus one modifier. The vest makes me think of him and look at him and as like, what, what is he, a cowboy? Like, <laughs> <laughs> Why does the vest only go halfway down his chest? Style. Jazz. Fashion with a capital F. Super genius chain and sh- shrunk it in the watch. Yeah. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> he only had money for half of the jacket. <laughs> <laughs> that shirt. It's very colorful. I'm not sure whether that's good or bad. It looks incorrect. It looks like it's supposed to be plaid. <laughs> like you think so? I think it goes really well with like dark colors of the rest of the outfit. Yeah, it's a really nice contrast. Yeah, it does. But I look at it and I'm like straight lines. That <laughs> hmm. I mean, it fits Jaden. He doesn't usually fit into the situation. He usually can't read the room. Like he can't read what to wear. I think it makes sense. Mm. It, this, this, his outfit tells a story about how he can't fit in. Yeah, I, yeah. I like the I like the, the shirt. I don't like the vest. When I think of him taking that vest off, I think it actually looks better. What's on his arm? It's his training gauntlet. I think it's supposed to be one of those things that's meant to protect your arm if you take a, gun, a, a blade to the arm. But then it also seems to, like it has a zipper, so maybe it's like an <laughs> A3W bag thing. Maybe it's where he attaches his dual disc. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and the zipper because that's where he keeps the Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Yeah. He also has a uh, like a fucking futile belt, and and the shoulder things you were talking about, mm. or Fry. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's yeah. I think the vest looks good though. I would say like we, we, like in the brief time that like those were popular, I hated those like shoulder flap things. So they didn't do anything, and they were like really annoying. And like um, I, I had a shirt that had those, and like. That the buttons would keep coming undone, so I just have these like random bits of cloth flopping around. I I I just think like, in some ways, like I really like the choice of the shirt that it's like quite out there, and like the, the vest just kind of covering it up. Yeah, I think the outfit itself like comes together well. I think so. Well, we know Jaden is canonically an otaku, so I just choose to believe he he like <laughs> he chose to wear that half vest because they wear those in Attack on Titan. Ah, oh, right. He just looked at his yeah. and was like, "Yes, this is gonna uh... be my fit." New headcanon. Just reminds me of the image of someone going into like a clothes store with the scout uniform vest, <laughs> and some lady just coming up and being like, "Thank you for your service." <laughs> <laughs> but he's actually in the military. <laughs> what about his hair, though? Uh, what do you think? Color looks good. Half of his hair is done one way, the half of his hair is done another way. As someone with with three cowlicks, I I resonate with that. <laughs> but <laughs> do, do you mean do you mean how he's got like kind of bangs at the front and then? I'm th- talking oh. about like his middlemost bang, like one half of a a yin or yang. Yeah, 
I mean, it, like, if we're talking about how it fits the character, it's like it's very much. I think it fits the um, like the, the the surfer look. The, um, I think Jaden's Jaden's look isn't what I would choose to look like, but I think it really sells you on what kind of character he's supposed yeah. to be, and it helps build up this weird vibe Jaden has. Yeah, that makes sense. So, what are we rating these guys? I'd go yeah. B as well. I like the idea that this is slowly going to turn into I'll go B the video. <laughs> I'll go B. I'll take B for 200. <laughs> We're on the second character. I know. I said slowly. <laughs> I'll be the dissenting opinion. I'll say C. If we did rank the tiers, I would put him on the lower end of B. But I'm not sure if, we sh- if, if, if we're like doing this based on objective opinions on the outfit itself or how well it fits the character. Probably a little bit of both. That will really change my opinion on what tier this should go to. I think I think for fitting the character, it's an A tier, and as an outfit, it's like high C, low B. Okay, fine. It's going on B. <laughs> <laughs> we just skip. You win. Skip to the end of this video. Every single character in B and Des is going fine. I'll put. I'll put. What's the frog's name again? Carapoya. Carapoya. I'll put Carapoya in B too. Carapoya's coming straight up to S. <laughs> Okay, Gumfoot. I don't like it as mm. much as Meows. I think it's much more plain than Meows. Yeah, it's just like Meows, but not as good. It's even got like a similar night uh, face thing, I've noticed. Yeah, except it looks even mm. more like a visor. Or, it, it technically doesn't look like a visor. You can't see. You can't breathe. That's why he wears <laughs> it on his arm and on his face. <laughs> it, feels, it feels like it's a lot leading a lot more into the night and a lot less into the um, steampunk. Yeah. This one, you could basically replace Jaden with a generic knight, and you wouldn't really question it. Yeah. Except, like, except for the like the wrist dial, <laughs> which now le- looks less like a dial and more like <clears throat> I don't know a, a thermometer or a, um. It looks like a um. It looks like a one of those bubble levels you use to to find to find level. Ah. Oh. He has to make sure he's flying in a straight line. You know what his uh, his outfit doesn't uh like convey to me. Uh, his title of Super Genius Jaden. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, so what would you do to to add that to the the out? Like, why would you choose? What fucking hell? What would you <laughs> change in the design to communicate that he's a super genius? I don't know. Would you change the stripes <laughs> for chess squares? <laughs> I would flip the chessboard around. <laughs> a generic like T-shirt that says something like "Oh, big brain," and it's just a brain <laughs> picture. <laughs> I think the gun placement is interesting. Because that makes the vest look like a gun vest where you just keep the gun on the side. But that makes the gauntlet look too normal. And ga- the fact that Meow's gauntlet looked so fucking weird was a good thing. And so Jaden's looking more normal mm-hmm. makes it less appealing as a gauntlet. To be honest, I've never looked at that and seen a gun, but I get, I, I, I see it. Like, Yeah, I'll, I'll be honest, I was searching the image with my eyes being like, gun? It just kind of looks like pipes, or like... Yeah, it just kind of looks like pipes to me, but I can see a gun shape. Like, I, it's, it's like if the gun barrel was hidden behind the shoulder plate, and you, you're only seeing, like, the handle. What did that make it, like, point up into his shoulder? <laughs> yes. Like... He's a super genius. We just... We, we are on, we are not on the level to understand why the gun placement True. is the way it is. He's thinking 34 steps ahead of you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so where are we putting the gun with? I think the gun looks like a C tier. Honestly, I think it, yeah, yeah. It seems like a lot to to downgrade yeah. it so much, but I think there's like a lot of really interesting designs, and I don't really want to be cramming them in between A and B tier or or B and S tier just because the gauntlets are the same. I like C, it gives us lots of space. All right, gun hilt, everyone's favorite hidden thirty four. <laughs> I don't understand what's going on with her hair, but I like it. Yeah, it's a f- it's like fading from puke green to lighter puke green. What? I I love the color. What do you mean puke green? It's the best kind of puke green. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) The kind that no shiny Pokemon are. Uh, I mean, if somebody, if somebody like had that hair in real life, I'd be impressed. Like, I I imagine that's not easy to get that fade. So, so, so seamless. Yeah. (laughs) It probably takes a lot of work to maintain it. Mm Mm-hmm. A lot of hairs in Kikonia look really good. And Gunhild's probably one of the best, or the best even. It's very unique, and Gunhild has more belts all across her outfit. <laughs> yeah. 
Is that three or four belts? There's two on her ankles. And I'm One, seeing two, five. three, four, five, six. Are there belts on like seven? Yeah. yeah. So that's seven. Six blue, one red. <laughs> what does this mean? The, the blue uh, belts are the six chosen by the key. Um, <laughs> I think Gunhild's design is definitely one of the best because she has what you call that thing, whatever the fuck she's wearing on her below her chest. C- corset. 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 Okay. She she's really going in on the medieval aspect with the corset. Yeah. And then she's also wearing a half jacket, but hers looks way better than Jaden. I also like the thigh highs and the boots and the skirt. I don't know. I just really like everything about whatever the fuck she's wearing. Everything from the waist down is what Meow like could have like it could have looked a bit better if he'd done something like that. Ah. You want Meow on thigh highs? Yeah, I do. Yes. <laughs> okay. You judge us? No, 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 no. <laughs> I I'm very welcoming toward thigh highs on characters. <laughs> yeah. Uh yeah, I think medieval good word for it. I'm not sure it fits with the setting, but it definitely fits with the other characters. It it really looks like you would you would see Meow like around a military base, but not on the battlefield. Also the fact that we said that Meow's hair is like short so it doesn't get in mm. your eyes, but also they aren't just in fighter jets, they are fighter jets. Mm. So I think that's taken to the extreme and I don't know uh how that how can Gunhild see? <laughs> well, they do have... What do they call it in Kikonia? Whatever the Kikonia equivalent of the very frequently used sci-fi mechanic of anti-gravity. Yeah. They do have that when they're flying around. Oh, okay. So uh, maybe that applies to the hair as well? Maybe. Like, I, I, I remember reading something about it when I was reading Kikonia. About how, like, the reason they can change direction at such high speeds and not fucking die is because they have something related to the ADMS that helps them not die to the G-Force. I think you can argue that all of Kikonia is just they have something related to the AMS that doesn't that helps them not die. <laughs> Welcome uh, to When They Cry, where in every story there's something that explains everything. True. I kind of feel like AMS is just the equivalent of magic, but that's also wisdom, but this is not the video for that. <laughs> Her outfit, I think her outfit looks good, but what do we think about the belt specifically, and whether they add or subtract? I was to going to talk. I think about the belts. She has the confidence to make them work. She's not embarrassed about the fact she's wearing six belts. Yeah, like, she's owning it. I appreciate the fact that like most of them <clears throat> seem like either functional or like at least deliberate. Like I feel like a lot of like anime stuff. Mm. They just have belts on there for no reason, and you can. It's like trans Final Fantasy. Yeah, like, like yeah, like um, what's her name? Uh, Lulu from Final Fantasy X. It's like you just got a lot of belts because you like belts. Like, <laughs> how do I how do I write it's that? L U L U. No. Lulich. Lulich. Final Fantasy X. Lulich. Guys, it's Lulich from Final Fantasy X. Like that. Oh. Yeah, like she's just got a skirt made what, of belts. What the hell is going what on? What is here? that? That's like a bloodboard enemy, but with belts. <laughs> oh, jeez, those are belts. That's a dress yeah. made out of belts. <laughs> oh, uh, Gunhild reminds me of fucking. I think she was called League Yarn. That's so funny. Which which fire emblem is this? Oh my god! I, when I showed this to my friends, they actually oh said this looks like a fire emblem <laughs> character, and I agreed with them. She looks. She reminds me of League Yarn. I don't, I don't see any belts. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Good. No, there's oh, yeah. a belt here on her waist. See? Oh yeah, I see it. Yeah. That one. I, that, belt. That's the one. That's the one belt that I think on Gunhild that is like non-functional. I, I, like aside from obviously like you got the choker and the ones on the boots, but the the choker and the ones on the boots, um, I I, I think they just look good. Like they they bring a bit of color to to the boots. Um, and like obviously people wear chokers all the time. Mm-hmm. And then you've got the two on her arm, which look like they may be holding something on. And then you've got the one around her waist, which is obviously just a regular belt. Mm. And then that one belt that's left is, like, not actually doing anything. But, again, I think it brings some colour to the skirt. So, the belts are symbolism, guys. <laughs> so, Meow doesn't have a belt on him unless he's uh, got his gauntlet on, which shows that he's not really part of... <gasps> like, he's part of the... He's the imposter? Uh, he's the imposter <laughs> oh my among God. us. Oh my. He's the mole! Uh, but... <laughs> No, but how uh, Meow is the one to recommend that they 
make the order of the public bath to go against uh, what the military wants uh, to, like, nip the seeds of war, uh, the sprouts of war. But uh, Gunheld clawed her way up from, like, the bottom of society, uh, and all of it was to become a gauntlet knight and to be able to live the life of luxury that they get to live. Uh, and she, like, emblazons herself with those blue belts all over her person. Oh my- Also, Jaden has one, and I have nothing to say about oh, that. I've, I've, you're totally on to something, actually. I don't know if you started that as a joke and it actually got serious. <laughs> it was a half, a half, half joke. joke. But I mean, that half joke gave me an idea. Because we do know Gunhild is up there in the ranks. Because she knows way more than any other person, as we know by the finale. Yeah, she's, what if she's the a belts, major general. What if the belts are like the HW equivalent of medals? Oh. <laughs> oh. That would be interesting. It symbolizes how they're controlled by the military. And the reason why Meow doesn't wear the blue belt unless they have their gauntlet on is because the gauntlet symbolizes oh what ties them. There we go. Now we're yeah. getting somewhere. Amazing. God damn. Belt symbolism. They're not medals though, because there's the um the AOU faceless um higher up who has like a shitload of medals, right? Is he is he on the um is he on the tier list? There's also the uh the Lado people with a ton of medals, right? Yeah. Generic guy with medals. Yeah, is he on the tier list? Uh no no. no. Oh. NPCs oh, aren't no. on the list. <laughs> NPCs. <laughs> In a visual novel, isn't everyone an NPC? <laughs> no. Um, well, actually... Shut up. Or is everyone that you see the thoughts of a player character? Isn't Kikonia its thing is, like, you don't get to be a player, you're just a piece this time, so they're all <laughs> Oh, everyone's an NPC! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're all pieces on this game board. Thank you. Thank you, Totoro. <laughs> I can't believe you didn't include my favorite character. While we're here, should we throw Gunhild up in S? Yes. I think Gunhild's yeah. an S. Yes. I like how this tier list has, like, specific emotes for each character. Jason is crying about it, and <laughs> Chloe is fucking dying, as she always is. She knows her fate already. <laughs> okay, Gauntlet then. Gauntlet, Gauntlet, Gauntlet. Where's your Gauntlet, girl? I do not remember Gunhild's Gauntlet. Oh yeah, that's definitely a gun. That one's definitely a gun. I like the inverted gun handle, because that makes it seem like the barrel would shoot out mm. from her fist. Instead of into her shoulder. <laughs> Instead of into her shoulder, <laughs> yes. I like how, like, her jacket, like, melds with yeah. the, the gauntlet. Mm -hmm. It looks really cool. Yeah, jeez. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize that. And I like her little sp uh, a spike mm. thing better than Jaden's. Not as much as mm -hmm. Meow's, but definitely better than Jaden's. It almost looks like it's the reason her hair is parted. Like across her shoulders, <laughs> because the the the, 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 the spike cut the hair apart. Yeah, <laughs> an intentional haircut. Maybe that's why she has different <laughs> lengths on her bangs. Her hair started out like just it, nothing about it at all, just a block of green, and then the more she trained, <laughs> it just became S tier. War wounds. Some people have a bullet on their shoulders. I have these haircuts. <laughs> it definitely I'm... looks a lot better than Jaden's to me. Yeah. It at least has a little bit of vision with this gap here. <laughs> the gun shoots out of how much vision your visor has. I think it's either A or B. I'll say A, a, a or S. Like, I think it's, it's a. almost as good, if not as good as Meow's. I think, I think the jacket, like, melding with it, it makes it go up a bit in my in my opinion. I think it might be A. I'd be happy with A tier. Okay, you've sold me on it. It also has a watch, and so it looks more steampunk. So who's the first from from Grave Mode? Chloe. Is it Chloe? Chloe. Chloe. There we go. She's even more into the in aesthetic mm. than Gunhild is. Yeah, it's it is kind of like a steampunky. It not a lot of steam in it but it's got that sort of old fashioned rustic uh, maybe a bit it is rustic is the word I was definitely looking mm. for yeah I like the way that her shirt is like with the because the belts are mm. right below her shoulder it makes the shoulders really puffy and just the general shape of the shirt in, in the like near the wrists I, I love it when like shirts do that shape and then the puffy shoulders. I just really like what her clothes are doing on her arms. <laughs> so, so this is a perfect example of a belt being well utilized. It 
yeah. does hold up the skirt. Uh, I like to think that belt in the middle is what's holding the entire outfit together. <laughs> it does look like it's bursting apart. It does, doesn't it? Just like her, her personality. She's ready to burst. <laughs> the belt's symbolic. Like, the belt's symbolic. Like. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> I, I just got it. Uh, and the else, the 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 wrist, not wrist. Do we classify that as a hip? The hip belt, I guess, is also supporting the vertical belt. <laughs> so, so all of the belts in her are functional, I think. Damn. The twist is it's one big it's... belt that's all just connected together. <laughs> <laughs> also, I th- that would be funny. I think that, like, while the uh, war cat was linked by a blue belt piece, these guys, their color is green, which connects all their designs, but they also all have it. Uh, brown belts. <laughs> Fuck! What does the brown truth mean? I, I think I think the green belt is definitely the one that like represents their squad because I'm looking at Chloe's gauntlet over there and it has the green belt. Oh, it does! I didn't notice. So there actually is a green belt. So that's interesting. I also really like the way the the shirt just circles around the chest. That looks very nice. Mm. And the, just the colors that they that Ryukisha chose for Chloe. Mm. Both in the in the dress and in the hair, I think they go really well together. I just had some war flashbacks because I saw the brooch and thought about <laughs> all the brooches and <laughs> in uh, Umineko. The brooch theory. Brooch theory. Mm. <laughs> no, I like like her hairband. Yeah, I think it it kind of reminds me of maid outfits, which is fitting for her character and how submissive she is to Okonogi. I think she's either A or S. I like it a lot. Yeah, I, I'd say yes. I, I'm gonna say A. I'd, I'd be willing to agree. My instinct says A, but I'm willing to bend for S. All right. I'll... Oh fuck! Oh no, we're 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 tied. I think we've only uh... seen four characters. I think this might be an A, but it also might be an S. I think it's A for now. Okay, it's an A for now then. Gauntlet though. Uh, let me see if I can find a better picture of it. It's not very clear, but there's a picture mm. of all three of their gauntlets down there. Mm. But... Oh, that's true. Okay. It looks like she has a furnace on her wrist. That's exactly what I oh, was that's thinking. that's cool. It's like an oven. You can <laughs> yeah. make cookies with it. That's, that's her, uh, her, what's it called, a uh, Pip-Boy from Fallout? <laughs> 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 and her gun handle now makes it look like her whole, whole arm is a gun. Ah, which is fucking that's cool. sick. That's awesome. That is really I really cool. don't know if, if it shoots out of their gauntlet anymore or if they just grab the gun. <laughs> and I hope it still shoots out of their gauntlet. <laughs> but it's much more anticlimactic to imagine it just carries a gun. <laughs> I think this is a material. Yeah. I agree. Or S. I, I, I could see it being an S. I like this one a little bit. <laughs> I actually, I, I really like the furnace. I, 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 I tend to... I, seem like I, I feel like I like the ones that have more of the steampunk going with the medieval knight aesthetic and the, the furnace the furnace i think is a really nice one yeah i like how goofy it looks <laughs> like it's goofy why goofy. the fu- it's 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 just like meows <laughs> like why is this thing here in this sh- what the fuck it's just really confusing and i think that's the appeal of it the furnace has a joint it actually does look not a joint uh a hinge. It looks like it actually does open. It's sort of blending with uh, she- oh. Logia in that image. That's where she keeps her Yu-Gi-Oh deck to battle with Jaden. Oh, oh my, my god. Goodness. Um, can can someone remind me if it's the blue boxes that are like the talented ones, right? Or is that the green boxes <sighs> that they use as an analogy? I think it's- because I did think about the fact that uh, Chloe is I. Fr- Chloe is one of the blue boxes that, like, they have a lot of the green boxes to <laughs> blue box Kikonia. It's just a bin. Kikonia <laughs> is... Wait. <laughs> what the fuck? She is a green box. <laughs> I think... Uh, oh, no. The third box. Kikonia red 3L bag. <laughs> <laughs> Phase two is going crazy. <laughs> it's a physical copy. <laughs> I was I was just wondering if the fact that all of Grave Mole uh, has green as a central color theme, uh, and the fact that there's the green boxes, and that none of them are necessarily especially meant to be there, because Chloe 
kind of has to be constantly, what's the word, like, reinforced. Uh, and oh. Koshka and Lilia, Lilia are both, like, criminals that are there. And or, Koshka's a criminal, I think, right? Or is she just there for research? They both. I think they both mm. could have gotten the death penalty, and they're doing this instead. What, what's the word they use? They're, they're equipment. equipment, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. Instead of furniture. Equipment. Okay. Yes. I, I was wondering if there's any if there's anything to do with the green and blue boxes in that, but I don't think there's anything. I there. mean, the fact that Warcat's signature color is blue makes it feel. But Gunhild is a green box who just like worked so hard that she was able to succeed. Yeah. Wasn't Chloe sort of the same way? Like. Uh, she was slow to improve. But they but they literally say in the story that they will have, mm. like, dozens of green boxes fail for the success of one blue box. Right. Yeah. Because they're, they're set up for failure without any chance of success from the start. Unless you're gun held. Unless <laughs> <Right. laughs> because of her hair color, Chloe is the blue, bo- the blue one. True. And the other two are there for her sake. I don't know. Maybe it's getting a little too over-analytical. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes, sometimes green is just a good connecting color. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, then then gauntlet. What? Uh, we've already rated the gauntlet. Yeah. No, we haven't. Okay, what what are we putting here? I like it. I think it's. I think it's A. Yeah. I'd say uh, A. All right. It's I like a. it as much as Gunhilds. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. I think this is another S for me. It's just do. Not only the the Asuka vibes, but also just the, the the actual clothes she's wearing and the colors go so well together. Like she has those mm. above the knee boots and then a really nice skirt, and then also the corset thing. But this time she has two belts and and layers. She has layers. She has a little red tie and then a yeah. jacket that's similar to uh, fucking Gunhild, <laughs> but it's green and it's cooler and it's fucking it's on Lilia. And she has. Sorry, does she have like literal cinnamon buns in her hair? Yes, I think those are actual cinnamon buns. Here's the question: because (laughs) are those cinnamon buns, or are they roses, or some kind of? They call out in the text. um, uh, Koshka's like, "Why should I listen to a girl who wears pastries on her head?" So it's definitely like it's definitely like a cinnamon roll or a bun. I don't think that flowers are glossy like that. They're definitely colored in frosting. Either way. Okay. Yeah, I, I like to believe she just licks them so they would stick to the hair. It's a, it's a mid-battle <laughs> snack. Oh! <laughs> Functional. She's gonna do a barrel roll and it's just gonna fall out. She's gonna catch it and just, like, toss it into her mouth. Yeah, I think the hair <laughs> like... accessory is the one weird thing about the uh, outfit, but it doesn't necessarily not work either, Fo- Fox, so. do a cinnamon roll! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I'd say it adds personality, but, like... That's probably there to, like, try and get closer to Koshka, I think. You think so? Because Lilia doesn't kind of... Like, the scenes we see of Lilia being, like, honest about how she feels doesn't really give me the impression that she would wear cinnamon buns in her hair. I think she would. And I don't know if this is the fact that she looks like Asuka making me biased towards this opinion. But we do know that in A3, like, the Gauntlet Knights really value food with a lot of sugar because it helps them. (laughs) Like, they they, they exhaust their brain so much just trying to fly around and using all these crazy weapons that they really value food with a lot of sugar. It's unironically a mid-war snack. (laughs) It's a snack. It's not a snack for Lilgia. Yeah. It's a snack for uh, Koshka. Uh. No, Livia is the snack for Koshka. Anyway, uh, I think she just feels very, one, very prideful about being a gauntlet knight, since only the cream of the crop get to be a gauntlet knight. And and so, like, she really values this thing that is what, that is the thing that is enabling her to be as good as she is, which is sugar. She's just wearing a cinnamon bun inspired hair clip. I think because that's why Asuka wears the 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 head plugs even when she's outside and ever. It's because she feels really prideful about what she does. Okay, so it's all in an analogy that Koshka consumes off of Lilia's uh, fake get along enthusiasm, <laughs> meanness, like you would feed off of a cinnamon bun in someone's head. Uh, I'll just pretend I understood what your point is. Yes, that is that is, that is the case. <laughs> uh, I will say, like her, what is that? Uh, like the red thing in front of her. It's a bow. What would you call but that? It's a bow. Look, 
I'm look stupid. closely um, at it and you'll see that it's not actually wrapped around her neck. It is attached <laughs> to her clothes. Like, huh. Oh, that's, that's true. <laughs> uh, looking at it from a distance, it kind of looks like she just got freaking shot. Like, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> like, no. And I've been thinking that this entire time. Just like, stop. No, it's just ketchup. <laughs> yeah, it's just ketchup. Maybe it's foreshadowing. Oh no, no, not Lilia. I like no. her. I don't think that. W- I'm just gonna overanalyze all of those. I'm also only now realizing her arms, the clothes in her arms, which really have the same shape as Chloe's. So that may be another thing making me really like her design. Buffy shoulders. The sleeve. Oh, the sleeves are larger near the wrist than they are near the whatever you call the thing where the arm. The elbow. Fucking. The elbow. Yes. <laughs> English is hard somehow sometimes. And anyway, where, where are we putting her? I think she's a good A. I'd be, I can settle for us. A is for yes. me, but I, I say we put it in S because I think it's high A or low S. All right. Thank you for your cooperation. <laughs> Countwood. <laughs> This one's the least knight looking to me. You think so? It kind of it kind of like has frills at the bottom. You you know what those frills remind me of? That one boss from Near Automata. This one? Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say it looks like she's got a whole ass crossbow. <laughs> I should I should finish near. <laughs> oh well. It's a good game. You should. Uh this time she like actually has a shotgun in her gauntlet, it looks like. Yeah. I like the surrealism of whatever gun-aligned thing she has below the frills of her gauntlet. I like the fact that you can't exactly understand what it is. The fact mm. that it doesn't actually look like anything. It just looks similar to yeah. things you recognize. But it isn't actually something you recognize. Which again is what I think makes a really good gauntlet design. design. Oh, and I see the hidden green belt. True. <laughs> uh, I Oh, yeah. I cannot unsee the shadow underneath the top part that's a knight's visor as, like, the bottom yeah. of the mouth, and it's, like, opening up to say, Hello! <laughs> you see what I say? <laughs> <laughs> like, the visor, the eyes back there. I, I, the, the visor seems very unnecessary on this one specifically. No, it isn't unnecessary. It makes it look fucking sick. I love it. No, it does, but, like, the rest of them are, like, plates that connect the gauntlet, and then this is just a strap above that part. You're right, but I think it looks cool. So. It does look pretty cool. I like how it's how it kind of flows into itself with the angles. Mm-hmm. Because the, the frills aren't exactly uh, straight. They, they're they kind of angled up into the curvature of the gauntlet. Mm-hmm. I, do, I like as a, as a point of difference with the other ones, like, she's got the dial, but it's, like, it's on a completely separate part. Like it's it's like a it's almost like you could say that's not the gauntlet and that's just an accessory she's wearing on her hand and the gauntlet is only on her shoulder mm-hmm, mm-hmm. or you could say the whole thing's the gauntlet but I like that it's different from the others where it's not part of the metal part and again looks very steampunk yeah I think this is an S for me I was gonna say B Let, let's see the tier list where have we placed everyone else yeah let's let's see the tier list I like it more than Jaden's for sure there we go I say B I think it's a good B for me <laughs> all right B it is. <laughs> Because I don't like it as much as Gunhelds or Chloe's, but I like it more than Jaden's. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, fair enough. We also need to hurry up, because we've been recording for close to an hour, and we're only on the second cast. <laughs> yeah, Yeah, we're only four characters through. Uh, okay. Koshka. Okay. No more okay, belt Koshka. symbology. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> there we go, the one and mm. only. The first time I saw her full sprite, I couldn't believe she was wearing such a long skirt. Because from what you see in game, it doesn't feel like it's that long of a, sh- a skirt or that she is that tall. She does look tall. Like you see her in game and you think Koshka is at max. Five feet. Uh, okay, you're. I was gonna say a meter and a half. I don't know how many feet that is. That is. It's like five feet, I think. No. Oh wait, and a half. Five foot tall. Yeah, that's that's like roughly five feet. Yeah, but then you look at her and she's. I think taller than that, at least she comes off that way. I had a little bit of whiplash. Uh, it looks like it's blood stained. It might just be me. I think it's because of the textures they use for the cools in Kikonia. Yeah. I don't think this has a lot of personality, so it feels like it's it's on the lower end of the tier list. The bow also, like, maybe it's that we don't have a ton of char- Like, we have characterization for Koshka, but I don't feel like we have. Like, she's extremely fleshed out yet. Right. 
so the bow feels a little out of place with the rest of her? I th- I think this is a trope where you put characters that are very wild that would walk around in clothes that are all destroyed and like you wouldn't even wear them anymore. You would just throw them in the trash, but they're still using it. And then putting them in very pristine clothes, very clean clothes. And I think she's forced to wear a queen outfit because she's in the military, but she hates it. I think that's what's going on here. Oh, there's... Uh... I think it's interesting how like if you look at the way that if you travel down from like the bow all the way down like you see like the bow oh it's kind of cute i wonder what's going on with this character very hurt face can't even see the eyes uh a very clean looking uniform not like much personality in there other than military which is not a personality (laughs) i don't like the dress the dress looks extremely plain even compared to everything else uh and it's mm-hmm. sort of like as you travel down it gets less interesting also we have the armband yeah. is this the only in like instance of that specific armband <laughs> yeah. yes okay I say l4 but the l is upside down really. good old gamma 4 it, it makes you think that's yeah oh, it's gamma, gamma 4. 4 we we figured this out on the previous smoking room we recorded that's only coming out in like three smoking rooms <laughs> yeah I think the plainness of the design actually works in favor of Kosha because there's so mm. much, so, so like her her head design is so busy with the hair and all all the like the bruises that if you had uh, clothes that were as complex as the as the other characters, it would make for a very busy design. I tell you tell you what it feels like. It feels like AOU has a complexity quota for their uniform, like. You, you, you can you can kind of wear whatever you want within a certain style, but it has to be a minimum level of complex. And Koshka was like, oh, I can't be bothered. So she like put on the absolute minimum so she could spend the rest of her morning playing Wanyadora. <laughs> oh, I like that. That's why Meow like got so much done with the top half, but then like there's like no pants because all the complexity was used up. <laughs> he reached the limit. <laughs> We're not counting like her surgery bandages as part of yeah, her drip. Yeah, that's not right? drip. Like... <laughs> I don't know. I think it works. Like... I think it works. It 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 gives her such a mysterious <laughs> vibe. Like, aren't you interested? I mean, we already know, but like, when when you start reading Kikonia, weren't you super fucking interested to know what the hell happened? Yeah, but she's interested in why this girl doesn't have eyes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Not fashion though. What happened to them? Mm. Where did they get? <laughs> <laughs> this is the fashion statement equivalent of a pirate wearing two eye patches. <laughs> <laughs> it turns out it's nothing to do with the um, with the scientists, and it's everything to do with the fact that she just gets into a lot of fights. <laughs> her, her eye with a bed is just completely fine. She just doesn't want uh, them to experiment on it or something. Uh, that or uh, under it is the Eye of Shining Justice, <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, which is equally possible. I would love that. <laughs> so where where are we putting Koshka? Yeah. I say because I'm making a firm statement on bandages are not drip. Uh, S tier design, C tier. Uh, I I feel like this is the worst one I've seen so far. Hmm. Uh, I like her design as a character, but as an outfit, like. Eh. I might give it D. Oh, okay. I feel like D is probably for like the extremely generic military uniforms. So maybe C. But it does feel rather generic to me. So C for now. It, yes, you disagree. Uh, n- I'm not sure because I'm really divided between the character and the outfit yeah. design. Koshka's a good character. I think I think the the the, the trip the drip itself isn't bad, yeah. but maybe not up to Kikonia standards. Let us. Let's look at the gauntlet then. Ah, uh, here we go. There yeah. we go. <laughs> it's it's not even going into the gauntlet. It's just a gun duct taped to a gauntlet. <laughs> <laughs> just straight up. Like most in the gun, gun. <laughs> the thing is, it. it doesn't even look like a gun. It looks like a door handle, and a bit of the door is still attached. <laughs> this is like a rifle for sure. There's like that, that's a really long gauntlet. There's actually more to it. It goes all the way down to like her knees. Uh, is there a full body spread of it? Oh, let me see if I can find a full art. And also, it's a really girthy gauntlet. And also, because this is like wild girl dressed. 
in nice clothes. It just gives off Violet Evergarden vibes, which maybe is why I'm I, I like her design a little bit more. Maybe I'm biased, and I can't find the fucking. Since do do you still have the game open? Could you, could you send a screenshot? Yes, I do. I'm trying to get this screenshot out. I will say say she loses the Gamma Four. Uh, that's not important, but I do see the green armband. I think to me this one suffers from the same problem as Jaden's, <laughs> where it's like mm. not Honestly, enough steampunk. That's all you have to do to impress me <laughs> is just put some steampunk on. This this feels like it's it's a, a medieval knight with a gun. This is like that um <laughs> that meme that's like parry this you filthy casual. It's like it just looks like parry this you filthy casual, just reflector repulsor shield. Uh, it freaking kills. Uh, <laughs> why can't it? Ling Jie. <laughs> is this the screenshot? Ah, yeah. But it's like an arrow. It's like a shovel. Like, no, I <laughs> like, oh, okay, yeah. It has a little like, uh, blade at the end of it, but like not like a bayonet. This looks like she's just stabbing you and she's shooting <laughs> like a you with shot. a shotgun inside the stab wound. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I think it looks really good. This gives the design some more points for me. Yeah. I think it adds up. I don't like the gauntlet on its own. But... It, it does have an awkward shape. I was busy with the screenshot. I wasn't listening. Sorry if I trek old, ga- old, old ground. It's got a weird shape. The gun is mm. interesting, and the bottom part looks... Yeah, I, I, I think the whole gun continuity is really good, but it feels like it's just clipping into the gauntlet instead of being a part of it. Yeah. Yeah. I... I- I'm not a fan. I don't think it's worse than Jaden's, so I would put it C. Every time we we, every time we talk about Jaden again, I'm like, was it really that bad? <laughs> <laughs> I think the gauntlet was. I like the I like the drip, but the Jaden's gauntlet was fine. So C or D? I think it's C. not the. Th- eh? Is it the worst? <laughs> there are D tiers that I am excited to talk about. Okay, I think we put this in C. Okay, it's a C then. I can't remember any any D tier gauntlets off the top of my head. Uh, I think a D tier would be the Leto girls because the gauntlets just look the same. All right. I was thinking ACR. You think so? I really like the ACR ones. But well, we'll get there. Um, yeah, we'll get there. What's the Chinese girl uh, Carl called? Lingji. Oh. Lingji. Lingji. I like the boots. I'm not sure about the the thigh highs. And with the dress like I don't think that's a good combo but the dress itself does look nice especially with the cape yeah I think it's really good mm. I, I I just like every part of it um, it's kind I like it but at the same time it's kind of actually no I, I do like it I it like it looks very official and it spe- speaks to how Lingji is like the perfectionist type she mm. has the star to symbolize her to symbolize her as a part of the Joe star bloodline Yes. <laughs> if you go further down the Joestar jo- bloodline, their their birthmark becomes a part of their outfit. It like phases out. <laughs> she's got the brooch. I don't know what it's called, but these these yellow braids she has on her outfit and the yellow cords they they look yeah. really good. Oh yeah, those are nice. I it's just like every part. You just look at any particular item. I just really like it. I like what the things in her hair. Yeah. I like the braids. The braids. Um, Every part of it complements it really well. Oh my god, are 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 we looking at an S tier? I think this is the easiest oh S tier. This is an easy S tier, I think. I'm satisfied. S tier speedrun. <laughs> All right, Gauntlet. I think this maybe uh, the, the bottom part may have been what Koshka's Gauntlet was trying to go for, but doing Jade. There it isn't a gun in this one that I can see. I really like like the. Like the feathers that it has. Mm-hmm. I I I'd love to see them flowing in the wind. Mm. Ah yeah. Uh, what about the golden gauntlet? By the way, are we gonna be able to find an image of that? <laughs> uh... I don't remember what it looks like very well. We can rate those when we get to the blue girls. Okay. I think oh, is it the same gauntlet? The... Cause Lingji has one too. Is it identical? They aren't in the tier list, but we'll rate them either way. I really like the fact that her own gauntlet has its own cape. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, it looks like the like elbow plating kind of has cloth instead of metal. 
or like maybe some kind of leather, but it doesn't mm. have the same texture as the metal part of the gauntlet. Ooh, I don't know, it still speaks metal to me. It's not like shiny though. The arrow thing on, on the on the hand, not not that I think is leather and not metal. Because the the white part on the elbow still has screws. I thought those were like buttons, but they might be screws, yeah. Yeah, it does kinda look like bolting. So so what do you think? S tier? I think this might be an S tier. Um, it's I think it's as good as Meow's. Yeah. Just for different reasons. Yeah, it's like it's 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 definitely it's like an it's like a night gauntlet, but like more of just a straight up night gauntlet. If that makes sense, like it's not it's not like a visor just like randomly stapled to the to the shoulder. It's like it's just just the gauntlet. But a very well executed one. Yeah, it feels like if you completed it, like they completed the um the suit, like she'd just be in, in armor, and she'd just look like she was wearing armor. I will say, if it was on someone else, then it wouldn't look nearly as good. Unlike the rest of the gauntlets, that kind of would look about the same on most other people. Mm. Yeah. But it meshes really well with mm. her design. <laughs> the fact that it has a cape is really funny. <laughs> yeah. I think without the cape and the feathers, it would look very plain. Yeah. But mm -hmm. I really like them. Right. Oh, right. Then it's unequivocally an s -tier. Let's go. Let's find oh. her. Oh my god, the two of them on s -tier. <laughs> Hey! Can you ship them even even harder? Like <laughs> Momotake. Ah yes, meow. <laughs> Thank you, Google. The rest of the episode from here onwards will be completely unedited because um if I don't release this episode this week, it'll be like what? Three weeks without an episode? And I don't have enough time to edit the rest of the episode. Um so you're just gonna have the rest of the episode unedited, which, I mean, at least it'll give you an idea of why editing the the episodes is important. Like, I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of conversations that are not synced up with what everyone else is saying, a lot of overlapping and a lot of silences. And it's just gonna be very awkward all around. So yeah, the rest of the episode is gonna be absolute shit, but <laughs> I hope... It suffices for the lack of content we've been having. It's just, I, I just want to remind everyone, this podcast started as a pandemic project where everyone was stuck at home with a lot of time in their hands. And it's, again, impressive. We've managed to keep going for this long. But yeah, lately, IRL stuff has been getting in the life of everyone. So it's getting increasingly hard to keep this going. Hopefully this will be the only time where you'll have an episode that is only edited until halfway through. But yeah, that's where things are now. I hope it's still somewhat enjoyable. I know it wouldn't be enjoyable for me. I would, like, I, if, if I was the one listening to the episode, I just wouldn't listen to it. Because a not, like, a barely edited episode is already unbearable for me so a not at all edited episode would just be something that I would just not have any enjoyment listening to so I mean it's I, I understand if you just don't want to listen to the rest of the episode it's fine I think everyone gets it still I hope it's like at least somewhat enjoyable I don't know well I'll leave you with the rest of it is what was gonna happen but <laughs> I skipped forward a bit to listen to the end of the episode and here's the thing um, you know since we're having a discord call from very different sides of the planet with different internet speeds discord fucks up the, the timing of the responses and the longer the recording goes for the, the, the harder those differences are like the more noticeable they are and I just skip to the end of the episode and they're just like a whole arguments being made on top of each other like no one would be able to like have any enjoyment from this and unless you're like a cpp2 and a gauntlet knight and you could have different sides of yourself listening to the two different arguments happening at the same time so i think i'm gonna fucking cut the episode in half and this was already gonna 
be more than one part because if the length of the episode and the amount of characters we've covered didn't give it away we didn't cover all the characters in this recording we were already gonna have a to do a part two and probably a part three but now i'm i'm gonna have to cut this episode it, 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 it just can't be published like this so yeah expect at least three parts from this and you know just to be more transparent it's not like we actually don't have time because it's not like every week all days of the week there are like things that actually physically enable us to edit the episodes it's just that i mean as much as we like the podcast we also like doing things IRL. We like playing games that come out. We like hanging out with our friends. So it's editing takes a long time, much longer than you would think. And so, you know, most weekends it's en- it ends up being like, do I want to spend six to eight hours sitting down editing an episode or going out with my friends? And most of the time, you know, real life stuff takes priority because it's real life. It is just how things end up being. And yeah, I, I guess that's it. I hope you enjoyed the episode. See you on the second part of this episode, I guess. And, and, and you're probably going to keep witnessing very long breaks in between episodes from now on. So just throwing that out there so you're, you're aware that a three-week break is likely to happen again. Yeah, see ya.